Om boom. Om boom. Om boom. boom. Be a great pet name. The art history bay. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Corey. I'm Natalie. I'm Ginny, and we are the Art History Babes. We have a quick Art History Babe brief brief episode for you today. Um, If you're new here, you don't know, we have several different kinds of podcast episodes. We have our Art History Babe briefs, which are these episodes. They're short. They're a little more to the point. Um, they're also not explicit, so you can use them in a classroom setting. And then we also have our long format episodes, which are a lot more, um, discussion based and a lot longer and a lot wilder sometimes. Um, (laughs) also currently for our art history Bay brief episodes, we're focusing on artwork that is being covered in the AP art history exam. So, um, each episode is focused on a work that you can find on the list of works you should be studying for if you are studying for that, uh, AP exam. So hopefully this can be a helpful little study tool for you. Also, I guess, uh, you know, we're doing this on YouTube too, YouTube and podcast episode today. So if you want to see our faces while you listen, head over to Art History Babes YouTube and watch the video. We got options. We got options here at the Art History Babes. We do. All right. Love to give you options. Today, we are talking about the Omboom Stone from the island of New Guinea, which we just talked about the Maligan masks of New Guinea yeah. as well. So we're kind of in the same area. You can check out that episode as well. So the Amboom stone was created around 1500 BCE and is made of gray whack, which is an incredibly hard stone, meaning it likely took a lot of time and effort to make. It's become well known for its incredible detail for being one of the oldest sculptures made in Oceania. And because it is just the cutest little guy (laughs) in the world. (laughs) (laughs) So cute. You better just get used to us saying that because it's going to be sprinkled throughout this episode. (laughs) Yeah, I actually like after like prepping for this, I was just like so excited by the cuteness that I had to go get my bunny and just like squeeze him <laughs> yeah, I'm called- glad that he was there for you for that yeah, there's a name for that they're called cute aggressions when you, you taught me that oh sure when something just so cute and you're just like mm, yeah it's a cute aggression I get them a lot <laughs> you do <laughs> <laughs> I do um and this this uh this little man here is definitely instigating some cute aggression for sure he would not be as fun to squeeze as bun (laughs) definitely not but someone should make him into a stuffed animal I think that oh yeah please all right so the Amboom stone the name for the Amboom stone comes from the Amboom valley in the Anga province where it was discovered other than that we don't really know a whole lot about the history of this object it obviously happened a long time ago 1500 BCE so it's very mysterious we don't have a lot of background information but consider even considering the enormous holes in our historical understanding of the Amboom stone this little guy has had quite the adventure just within the last six decades so the Amboom stone is a seated creature that is made of one solid carved stone And it's carved in the round, meaning that every single side is meant to be viewed within the world of sculpture that is in the round. You can see it from all around. You can walk around it. Um, And I think the best way to describe the shape is oval. It was probably the shape of the original gray wax stone that it was carved from, that oval shape. So starting with the face, there's this 
kind of curious raised seam down the center of the nose. And it is a very long curved nose with these really adorable eyes on the sides of the nose. And it meets at the bottom for this little mouth. The only way I can describe the mouth is from uh, Spongebob, the fish mouth. Mm-hmm. And oh, I put yeah. a photo <laughs> for you guys to reference. I couldn't find a smile, so it's a frown, but you can see it. So the curved nose then seamlessly turns into the oval-shaped body on the back, with the exception of some stylized shoulders. And from there, they continue on to these little arms that finally end in hands resting on his really, really cute belly. It's just like a round belly. And it also has uh, what looks like a little belly button. And that just demonstrates that they understood, whoever was making it seemed to understand anatomy on a little bit deeper of a level than just arms, legs, face. So it's believed to be a pestle. And that is in reference to a mortar and pestle, which you would recognize from grinding down herbs or food or anything really, pigments. And it's one of 12 very similar objects that all have this zoomorphic or, uh, you know, just animal-like structure. So 12 that have been discovered and actually survived because we don't know how many there were at some point, but there are 12 that have survived and we now still can see from the island of New Guinea. As far as the mortar and pestle, his neck would make up the handle and his body would have been used to pound down food or other materials like we've talked about. So that is, you know, the way that it sits is the direction you would use it. And while it's in very, very good condition, which symbolized that it was valued and treated well, it also has this shiny patina all around the outside, which does signify that it was well used. So while it was a tool, people did actually use it seemingly a lot. And while it's clearly some kind of animal, the exact species is, you know, debated as often things are in art history. And there are people who believe that it's a baby echidna, which is a spiny anteater. It's very cute, Mm. obviously, like this thing. (laughs) Um, And others think that maybe it's modeled after a now extinct species of marsupial. So who knows? Whatever it is, it's real, real cute and supposedly very powerful. Mm Hmm. We don't know who made the Amboom stone or for exactly what purpose, but it's thought to be a totem, an animal that a community believes to hold some perceived power. By the time the Western world discovered this adorable little guy, it was the 1960s and a group called the Enga were in possession of him. They called the Amboom stone a quote, Simting Belong Tumbuna, which literally translates as the bones of the ancestors. These objects were used as powerful ritualistic tools and through a process of literally burying burying them in ancestral burial grounds, they were imbued with the spirits of ancestors for even more power. Supposedly this little man and objects like him could move about on their own. In the case of Little Amboom here, apparently he can go on adventures and create controversy all on his own. The journey he endures when he leaves the island certainly supports this rumor, at least metaphorically. When Christianity was brought to Papua New Guinea in the 1930s, items like the Amboom stone lost their potent spiritual meaning now under the eye of the white man, the Amboom stone had new value as a a very popular term at this time, but one that we are not fans of at all here at the Art History Babes, quote, primitive art. In large part because of this shift in ideology, somehow our little friend was sold by two boys to a European trader for 20 (laughs) shillings. We then sold it to a London art dealer named Philip Goldman and finally to the Australian National Gallery in 1977 for $115,000. 
<laughs> um, yeah. Just a, a, an annoying uh, little little bit about, you know, just the problematic art market being problematic. In his negotiations with the museum and by way of justifying his asking price, Goldman compared the Omboom Stone to Jackson Pollock's Blue Poles, which the gallery had purchased a few years earlier, basing the, quote, primitive Omboom Stone's value on that of a work of modern art. The gallery is reported to have paid $1.3 million for the painting Blue Poles in 1973. So just making a completely ridiculous, unnecessary comparison to make money is yeah. dumb. It's dumb. <laughs> dumb. It's dumb. <laughs> Seriously. And the price jumps when you like 20 shillings to $115,000 and then compared to something that was worth, not worth, but bought, sorry, bought for $1.3 million. <laughs> Worth yeah. is subjective, so we're not going to go there. But, yeah, like, I mean, it's just to see it all right there, lined up. Yep. Um, it, it's often about what people can convince people to pay them for these things that um, they probably shouldn't even have ownership of to begin with. So, Oh, yes, and you better believe we will get there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I don't even see it so I don't even understand the comparison either like yeah it's yeah no there's no I'm sorry but there's no comparison (laughs) it's a real reach (laughs) it's a real reach like uh. so tragically while on loan to a French museum in 2000 our sweet baby angel was dropped and shattered to pieces on the ground specifically into three large pieces and then many shards of stone. Um, And it's hard to find a silver lining in something like this, but conservators were able to gather more information about the Omboom stone based on this breakage. So they did discover that what were previously believed to be uh, like actual breaks and then repairs that would have been made by the original owners of the stone, they were actually discovered to be natural fracture lines that happen in Greylock all on their own. So that's slightly less important than the other thing they found out, which was the actual date of the object at 1500 uh, BCE, which I mean, knowing the age of the object is nice I guess I guess if that's what we get out of it falling to the ground and breaking to pieces right right it is what it is although the almond stone was meticulously repaired back to you know a pretty good condition the damage definitely ignited more conversations around the already hot topic of ownership over the almond stone so This actually sucks and is unfortunately not very surprising. Apparently, the Papua New Guinea Museum tried to buy the Omboom Stone at the same time it was offered to the Australian National Gallery, but were not able to do so. They are limited to what they can afford in terms of international antiquities, and it makes it very difficult for them to compete with Western museums. And although they just became an independent state in 1975, legislation has been in place since 1913 to prohibit the export of objects considered of antiquity and relevance to Papua New Guinea. Problem is, only recently have they been able to actually enforce said legislation, meaning, which you probably already figured out because our listeners are so smart, it is possible, if not likely, that the Amboom Stone was illegally sold and exported off the island. The fact remains a point of contention. Shocker. That happens far too often. So that's, that's our guy. That's the, the Omboom Stone. I included send this little Omboom memento home. mori. Seriously, send Omboom home with <laughs> this adorable stamp that I found of him with a little <laughs> skull, a little memento mori stamp. Guys. Yeah. It's so cute. cute. That? 
It that does it get cuter? If only we could ship all of our stickers with this little stamp. I know. It's pretty great. Um, but yeah, it is a serious problem when larger Western uh, institutions and museums buy items from, and especially legally buy items yeah. Um, yeah. from these countries. It's one thing if the country is actually making a profit. Uh, it's another thing if it's being illegally snuck out for 20 shillings Mm -hmm, and there is no uh I don't think there's any records of who these boys were so um and I guess they were also supposedly encouraged to sell by a uh local minister minister so by the time Mm -hmm. like Christian ministries had come Uh, um that was apparently where they got the idea to sell it in the first place so interesting layers not the funnest layers I know that's not a word yeah 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 um just important things to think about but um he yeah he's a cute little guy let's get him home if possible and Mm -hmm. yeah I think that's that's all we have for this little baby episode yeah. Um, yeah, you can check out our other our Maligan Masks episode if you want more on art from this area. And yeah, until next time. Until next time. The Art History Bay to me.